Before you begin, you're going to want to have all your materials ready to go so that you have a nice, calm print run. You'll need plastic cards, sponges, your ink mixing knives, your mixed ink, as well as clear and blue painter's tape. You should have your printing press, screen, paper, and test sheets ready to go. It's important to have your drying rack close to you so you're not running across the room to dry your prints. Screen printing is a very fast-paced process, so you don't want to be wasting too much time moving around the entire room. The first thing you're going to do is tape out your screen. So using your package tape, what you're going to do is crimp it towards the center and tape the gap between your frame and the emulsion. What this does is it closes that gap and prevents any ink from leaking onto your press or paper. Your tape length should be slightly smaller than the length of the frame side itself. What I do is I pull the tape across the frame and trim it just a bit short. This way it's not too awkward to deal with. The other pieces should cover any gap in between the corner of the frame. If not, you can just put a small piece to cover it. But remember to always overlap the emulsion to ensure you have a nice clean edge and no screen exposed. It's important that you do this before you add ink to your screen to ensure that you won't have any exposed screen because remember exposed screen ink will print through this and you don't want to get any ink on your paper or the press. Remember when applying I crimp it with my thumb that way it kind of bends it and I'm able to get a nice even seal between the frame, the mesh, and the emulsion. If you need to cover up a small area, like a corner, you can just cut a small piece of tape and wrap it around to ensure no ink will get through. Flatten out the tape, make sure your squeegee won't lift it, like so. This is actually quite a big squeegee for my artwork, so I'm going to go ahead and select a smaller one. Your squeegee should be at least half an inch to two inches bigger than your artwork on both sides to ensure you print it well, but you also don't want to get too close to your frame. So this is a better size squeegee here. I have room on both sides to print. Essentially, your squeegee is going to be pulled against your artwork. So you'll have to decide which direction you'll have your squeegee. This will dictate how you'll need to lock in your screen. Since I've doubled up my image here, or what we call two up on the screen, I'm going to tape away my second layer so no ink will go through. I'm actually using blue painter's tape for this because it will come off easier when I need to wash it. I use clear tape for the sides because you can actually wet the clear tape in the washout booth and it will make it quite easily to remove. But when you're putting clear tape on top of emulsion, it becomes quite difficult and tends to leave a slight residue. Blue painter's tape can break down easily when wet, so what I do is I put my clear tape over the top nearest my artwork. With the blue tape underneath it, it will make it easier to remove for cleaning. Now with my screen locked into place, I now need to register my paper. So I need to align my paper with the image on the screen to make sure my image 1 prints in the same spot every time and 2 prints where I want it to. So take your film and tape it to 
a scrap paper. Now this scrap paper should be the same size as all your sheets. So I really just use a piece of my good paper and I sacrifice it for this process. And that way I know my registration and my placement on the page works out well. So again, use blue painter's tape to tape this down just because this is temporary. And what you're going to do is line up this film with the stencil to make sure you print your image exactly where you want to place it. Since it's difficult to move your print around while it's under the screen, I attach three extra sheets of paper to the bottom and side. These we call the arms, and they'll allow you to move the paper around without having to stick your hand underneath the screen. Just gently tape these strips to your paper. These can be scrap pieces. I just use the cutoff ends from my watercolor paper. Now you can slide your print underneath your screen and move those strips back and forth until you can line up your paper with the image on the screen. This way, when you print new sheets of paper, they'll all line up in the exact same spot based off the next step. Here's a closer view of the screen. As you can see, I'm using those tabs to align my film to my exposed stencil. That way I'm positioning the paper in line with where it sits on the screen. Once I've done that, I'm going to carefully lift my screen as to not move the paper. Now, be sure to tape your paper down. What we're doing here is creating a jig so that we can align each sheet of paper to land in the same spot each time for printing. Once I've taped my paper down to the press bed so it won't move, I can now remove my tabs or my arms, we call them. And now I'm going to install my plastic cards. These plastic cards are just the gift cards we use. And I be sure to install at least three for sliding my paper to print. Carefully align your plastic cards right up against your paper so that you don't see any gaps. And be sure the tape covers the entire plastic so it doesn't lift during your printing. You're going to have at least two on the bottom and one on the side. You can do two on the bottom, two on the side, but don't just use one and one. Make sure to have extra so that you know your paper sliding and not moving. I like to use two on the bottom, one on the side for this size, but again, a larger sheet of paper might require more. Once you have that, you can remove your paper now since you've established where your fresh sheets will line up. And then just take your blue painter's tape and again cover those plastic cards again so you don't move them during the printing process. Carefully look at your screen and if you do identify any other pinholes that you might have missed, when patching with the emulsion, you can take a little bit of tape as a last minute patch and block that. Just be sure it's nice and flat because your squeegee will go over this piece several times. Your last step should be to clear the area of any unnecessary items and establish a clean area and a dirty area. That clean area should contain your paper and your dirty area should contain all of your inks and sponges. My dirty area is actually to the left of the screen and my paper is to the right. So now I'll begin and I'll put a nice layer of ink down. I actually went a little heavy here. The screen isn't that open, so I'll just have to do a little bit more cleanup at the end. Now I'll set my ink to the side and get ready to flood my screen. 
The flooding is a preparatory step so that when you do apply pressure to print, all you're doing is placing the ink from up top onto your paper. You also flood to prevent your ink from drying in your screen. So you always want to make sure it's a heavy layer. Now this stage is the printing. So you're pressing that ink into the paper through the screen. You start off by printing on test sheets here to condition the screen and make sure it's printing well. The first print usually has a few open areas, as you can see here. The top has some marks. That's, that's normal for the first printing. For the second to fourth print, your image should be good. If it's not, there could be some other problems. Once you're happy with the way your image is printing, you can proceed with printing the next few sheets. These are your good sheets here. So carefully place it against the cards and then press your squeegee to print. While I'm pressing my squeegee, I'm holding it at a slight angle. I'm still keeping it pretty high, but you're pressing it against the screen to print. When I'm not using the screen, I'm flooding it. So you want a thick layer of ink over the top to make sure this acrylic will not dry in your screen. The acrylic drying in the screen is one of the worst things that can happen. It's easily fixed, but it will slow your process down. Because this is such a saturated layer, meaning there's just so much ink here, I'm seeing some marks in my artwork. That's happening because I don't have any off contact. Off contact means you want the screen to bounce back as soon as you've printed it. When you have thick layers of ink, it's not bouncing back because it's too close to the paper. So you raise the screen up just slightly. So once your squeegee has gone over it, it will pop up quickly and will not yield any weird mark making. If the screen doesn't pop up and sits in your layer on your paper, you're going to get some quite interesting marks. So now I'll continue to print and carefully loading my paper in so that they touch all of my cards. It's important that you take your time when loading your paper. Remember, if you have your screen flooded with plenty of ink, you do have time to make sure you're loading your paper and all of your materials are ready. So be sure to flood that screen in between prints. So as you can see, the print is looking good, so I'll continue my press run. You want to make sure to look at each print as it comes off the press to make sure there's no any irregularities printing or that you might need some ink and so forth. Keep track of it. It takes about five to ten seconds to look at it, identify anything wrong. If there is something wrong, you're going to want to stop printing and either clean up or try on a test sheet. But if it's working, continue printing. I'm going to slow the video down here so you can see the printing with the squeegee and how important it is for you to print evenly so you get consistency. So as I go to print, I remember it should be flooded. Take your squeegee and put it at the very top of your image, a slight angle, and press as you pull down. Stop short and try to get any of that ink off of your squeegee by sliding it forward. Check to see that your paper has been released and then flood it. You flood it by lifting up your squeegee off your screen about a quarter of an inch so that you can deposit all that thick ink over the top. Remember, this is your barrier to prevent any acrylic ink drying in your screen.
after I printed this one, I noticed that a small area of emulsion is starting to break down. It happens. So I can take a little bit of tape and actually tape it from the backside. This is a short term fix, especially if you're at the end of your run. The last thing I want to do is clean off my whole screen just to tape out a small little area. So I just put my tape on my print side. That did the trick and I can continue printing. If I were to find large breakdown, I would then want to clean the screen, remove the ink, tape from the front, and then start again. As you can see here, you can really establish a rhythm of printing that allows for efficiency. So within 10 to 20 minutes, you can have your whole first layer complete. I'll wrap up my print run by using all my extra sheets I set aside for test printing. This will be great for building up some imagery to show a history of all the prints I've pulled. These are called test prints. You'll notice I left my screen completely open. I didn't flood it. Now I'm going to set a scrap paper. This can be newsprint, anything to protect our press bed from getting ink all over it while we clean the screen. Go ahead and gather all of your ink first using your plastic cards. Do not use anything sharp here. It must be your plastic cards. I'll first use my squeegee to collect as much ink as possible and take that plastic card and run it down to gather all this extra ink. Remember before I said I put a little too much ink on my screen? No big deal though, it just means a little bit more cleanup. It's better to have too much ink than not enough during your print run. So get all that ink off so it makes cleanup easier and you can reuse it later. Sometimes your ink can get a little thick by this time, depending on how long you've been printing. You can always mix a little water to reactivate it. And now collect all of your ink to be placed back into your cup. So I just take my card and I rake all the ink to one corner and I'll use another card to scoop it back into my ink container. Get as much ink as you can. Once I do that, I'm gonna hit my screen with a sponge. Now, if you were gonna print, say, in a different color, or you had some artwork you wanted to add that was on the screen, you could clean everything, what we call on the press cleaning. But since I'm done with this screen, for now, I'm gonna take it to the sink to wash. But first, you can hit it with your sponge just to get any excess ink off of it. Your screen takes priority in the cleaning process. Make sure to clean this first. Because your screen is activated, there is a slight layer of ink inside of the mesh, and you want to clean that quickly. The hose and the pressure washer is going to do a great job of removing all of that ink. Once you've wiped down your screen with the sponge, you can remove your clamps as well as undo the hinge clamps. Sometimes the hinge clamps get stuck to your screen, so you just have to do a little bit of a wiggle. Undo the hinge clamps and move your screen back and forth until it's released from the grasp of the hinge clamps. And now I'll take it to the washout to clean this screen completely. The first thing you want to do is wet both sides, no matter what. I usually start with the print side because I can get a lot of ink off without it spraying back at me. And then I move towards the ink side and I'll do the bulk of my cleaning here. Be sure to get everything wet and wiped down before you proceed with removing any tape. The water is going to help remove any sticky 
tape because we don't want that to be left on. That will damage your screen. So if the tape struggles to peel off, wet it from the back and then try again. Then take your sponge and wipe down both sides, scrub any ink away, and assess that there's no ink left. This screen has a second layer, so I'm not going to proceed with reclaiming. I'm going to water it all down, make sure there's no ink left by looking at the light, and then proceed with cleaning all my materials. Make sure to wash everything down carefully, including your squeegee. Any dry ink on the squeegee could affect how it prints. There was ink left on this squeegee, so I took a pad and wiped it down, scrubbed it for a little bit to make it nice and sharp again. Once you've finished in the sink, you can remove all of your tape and clean up your area. I'm resetting everything for my next color. I kept the tape on all of my cards because I'm going to reuse it again, so I just lay it on the side of the table. And now I'm going to tape the screen again. Since water got under my tape, I had to remove it. And now you'll see I'm doing the same thing like before, blocking out any areas in the corners to protect my screen and frame. Looking at this, I decided to move my press to get a better angle. So I'm going to undo my clamps and turn my press this way. You can print any way possible as long as you're comfortable printing. I'm going to show you printing from the side with the hinge clamps to the left. Now your press is set up, you'll need to register your paper to your new image. So take your first print. This usually isn't your best print, but it's registered in the right area. And you're going to reinstall those arms or tabs to your paper so you can easily move the paper around underneath the screen. Proceed with moving the paper around until it lines up where you need it to be. As soon as you've lined it up correctly, you can tape it down and apply your cards. I had a little bit of trouble determining where to put my image because I don't have any registration marks yet. So I'm going to take my key drawing and tape it to this first layer so that I can line up my second layer to the key drawing. When you're lining up your layer, it's important that you press the screen down so that you get an accurate gauge of how your screen's going to make contact with your paper. So every time I move my film and get it pretty close, I'm going to push down on the screen to make sure it's accurate. Remember, you're printing by pushing down the screen, so that's going to give you the best gauge of where your image is hitting. As soon as I'm ready, I carefully lift the screen and I'm going to tape my paper down to the press so that when I put my cards, I don't accidentally push the paper to the side. Remove your arms and proceed with placing your cards on your press bed. The sheets that we use for our arms can easily be stored away when not in use, so be sure to tape them together and keep them. Whenever I put my screen back down, I just check that it is lined up and I proceed with putting my cards. I always put my cards in the exact same way as before, so two on the bottom and one on the left. The paper needs to line up in the exact same spot every time, and you don't want to start lining up the paper the wrong way by, say, putting the card on the right instead of the left, especially if your paper isn't exactly cut the same. They're always going to line up, if you use the same corner. If you need to, write in the very bottom of the back of your paper which corner you lined up your paper with. And now I'm ready to go. Finally, block out any parts of your screen that you don't want to print. 
You can use your Duralar or an extra sheet of clean film and tape it to your screen so you don't get any ink on your paper. And now I'll proceed with printing. So I'll lay down my ink, do a few test prints before I go on my nice paper, make sure it's registered and printing well. Once it's printing well, I'll then proceed with my good paper. So you always want to start with your test sheets and the prints that maybe didn't work out first before using your good paper. Remember to keep the paper in this right orientation so you don't accidentally print your image upside down like here. I did this more for fun to see what it would look like with the overlap, but you have to stay focused when printing. I'm now going to slow the video down to demonstrate what you should do if your image isn't printing correctly. So throughout your process, you're going to face some issues with ink drying in the screen. It is water-based ink, and it dries rather quickly. So when you notice a spot isn't printing right, it might be a white speck in your artwork, it's just showing that your screen is blocked due to dry ink. So what you're going to do is take your scrap bit of paper that you use to clean your screen and put it underneath so that you can gently scrub that area. So place your scrap paper and then take your wet sponge and just focus that wet sponge right on that particular area. It shouldn't be soaking wet. The wetter your sponge, the more you'll have to clean later. Once you've cleaned it out, then you could proceed with printing your image. I prefer cleaning the spot out on the ink side as opposed to the print side. That way you don't get a lot of water on the bottom because you can clean the top rather easily. Make sure you don't have any ink in the screen. As you can see, it's not flooded. That would make it a lot harder to clean. So I'll continue printing with my scrap paper. And I'll just run that until it looks good. So the first one's definitely not going to look great because there's a lot of water in the screen. So I'm going to run my test sheets until it looks good. Don't use this on good paper yet. Use your newsprint and wipe down any water that might have accumulated on your press bed. Remember, you want to keep that press bed super clean because you don't want any ink to transfer to the back of your print. Continue testing the image before you proceed to the good paper. So I have some extra sheets that I'm printing it on until I feel comfortable it looks good. Proceed again with printing until your edition is complete. If you face another issue, you'll have to do the same thing. If it's proceeding and continuing to get worse, it's a good idea to wash out the screen and start fresh. Once I'm finished, I'll go ahead again and gather all my ink, put it back into the container, place a scrap sheet underneath my screen so I can clean it, and finish the second color. When you proceed to the next color, it's important you reset your whole station, including wiping down your press bed and removing all of your cards. And now my third layer. So I'm going to first block out my image that I've already printed so I don't get in any of that ink on my paper and I'll go ahead and tape my screen. Remember to tape your screen before every time you print. This will ensure your protection of the frame as well as your printing paper. Be sure to lock your screen in place so that it doesn't move. You don't want your screen to move at all and then collect all your prints off the drying rack. Be sure to give your prints at least 20 to 30 minutes to dry before proceeding with the next color. To test if it's dry, run your finger across the color. If it doesn't get on your hand, then you're in good shape. Now I'm registering my image again using my key drawing, lining up the paper, and then I will install my cards. Remember to use any tape to block parts of the screen you don't want to print and keep those cards on the same side that you've been using.
cards installed, I can remove my film and proceed with printing. You can use the dry rack to temporarily store your prints, but I wouldn't leave them on there for more than a day. And now the final layer. So for me, it's going to be my key color. I'll put my film back on my paper. And then line it up to make sure I have accurate registration. Tape my paper down so it doesn't move, recheck it, and then put my cards. Two on the bottom, one on the side, at least, and then proceed with printing. The final layer is always so exciting because you finally get to see the image finished. It's been great to see the image slowly build and now finalize with this fourth layer. I'll print my first image, check it, make sure it's printing well. If not, continue with test prints until it does. Add my off contact to help not leave any weird markings in my ink. And proceed with the good paper. I printed a few without the red to see what it would look like here. And it just helps you see maybe what some images look like without certain colors. As you can see by now, the setup takes a lot longer than the actual printing process. And that's the way it should be. Everything should be set up beautifully so that the printing is the fun part. Now that I've finished, I'll go ahead and clean up everything, including my screen. As you can see, most of the ink was removed on the press, and now I can just wash it all away. And since I'm completely done with this screen, I'm going to go ahead and remove the stencil as well. First, remove all of your ink until it's all clean. What's nice about reclaiming the screen is it will help remove any tough ink that might have been left in the screen from before. Remember to wash your screen before removing any tape. It makes it nice and easy to remove. And then now proceed with spraying the reclaimer liberally on both sides of the screen. Be careful spraying this reclaimer as to not get it in your eyes. So again, you can spray pretty liberally with this. And what you're going to do is allow it to sit and let the reclaimer do all of the work. Let your screen sit with the reclaimer for at least five to 10 minutes. Don't let it dry, but don't wash it away too early. You'll know if you've started too soon when the emulsion is still pretty tough to remove. It should come off nice and easily, just like this. So go back and forth, up and down, or left and right across your screen to ensure you're getting all of the emulsion off of your screen. Slow down and look for any little specks that remain. If you leave any of the emulsion on the screen, it's going to stay there and impact your next image. So that's why you want to carefully go back and forth to assess and make sure all of the emulsion is removed. If some parts prove to be difficult to remove, repeat this process again. Spray that spot liberally, let it sit, 
and wash away. Remember, do not let your emulsion dry on the screen. Once you've washed all the remover away, you can now proceed with the beginning stage of degreasing the screen for the next image.